Welcome to this basic lecture about variables and scales. In statistics, a variable can be seen as something that can be measured or counted, for example body weight, body height, number of children and age are examples of variables. In contrast, a parameter is a value that represents a characteristic of a certain population, for example mean body weight, median body height, Proportion of infected plants are examples of parameters. Variables can be classified into different types depending on their scale. Categorical variables, also called qualitative variables, are variables that consist of categories. If the categories can be ordered in a natural way, such as good, bad, or best, the variable has an ordinal scale. Whereas if the categories cannot be ordered, like yes or no, men and women, or the colors blue, red and green, the variable has a numinal scale. Numerical variables, also called quantitative variables, are variables that can be measured with an instrument or that can be counted. Discrete numerical variables are variables that can only take on a limited number of values. For example, a six-sided die can only take six possible values. Although discrete variables can be represented as decimal numbers, as long as there is a limited number of such decimal numbers, they are usually represented by whole numerical values. For example, the number of children in a school is a discrete numerical variable because you can't have, for example, 35.6 children in a school, only whole numbers. Also, the number of possible children in a school is limited. Age in years can also be seen as a discrete variable, because age represents the number of years since birth. Age is normally represented as a whole number in a certain range. In contrast, continuous variables can generally take any numbers and are usually presented as decimal numbers. These variables are usually measured with some sort of instrument. For example, we can measure the body weight with a scale and body height with a yardstick. Note that the variable age can theoretically be considered as a continuous variable since it would be possible to measure age with super small time units. Let's say that we have collected information and measured variables on seven patients. For each patient we have information about their age, body weight, gender, disease state, systolic blood pressure and pain score. The variable age, weight and blood pressure are numerical variables, where weight and blood pressure are continuous variables, whereas age is a discrete variable. Gender and disease state are categorical variables, where gender is a numinal scale, whereas disease state is an ordinal scale because the categories of this variable can be ordered as mild, moderate and severe. Although the variable pain score consists of numbers, it is considered as an ordinal scale because the numbers represent a scale between 1 and 10, similar to the variable disease state, which could be defined as a scale between 1 and 3. Most statistical software tools will not discriminate between discrete and continuous variables. For example, the option scale should be selected for numerical data, both discrete and continuous in the software SPSs. Whereas ordinal or numinal should be selected if your variable is on categorical scale. We'll now discuss how we can change the scale of a variable. It is quite common to change the scale of a variable for different types of statistical analysis and to present the data in different ways. For example, let's say that we have measured the upper blood pressure of 8 patients. We now like to categorize these values into low, normal and high blood pressure. For example, we might use the following ranges to determine if a value is defined as low, normal or high blood pressure. By applying these ranges on the blood pressure data, we have turned the continuous variable into a categorical variable on an ordinal scale. For 
For example, since this patient has a systolic blood pressure that is less than 90, it is categorized as having a low blood pressure. Whereas this patient has a systolic blood pressure of 100 that is in the normal range. The blood pressure of patient number 2 is therefore categorized as normal and so forth. By using this scale, we can now for example calculate the proportion of patients who have low, normal and high blood pressure. We see that 2 out of 8 patients, 25%, have a low systolic blood pressure and that 25% have a normal systolic blood pressure, whereas 50% have a high systolic blood pressure. This was the end of this lecture about variables and scales. Thanks for watching.